Ms. Murphy, call the meeting to order. Now I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Elmwood Park Mayor and Council for May 20th, 2010 to order. On roll call, Councilman Catamania is absent. Council members Castiglia? Here. Trawinski? Here. Poncino? Here. Work? Here. Convoy? Here. Mayor Mola? Here. We have a quorum. Will everyone please rise for a fair flag salute? Oh God, our Father, we ask you to bless this meeting with your trust in your fatherly care and protection. Please remove all selfishness and prejudice from our hearts and plant in a keen sense of justice and a greater love for you and our neighbor. Guide us in our deliberations so our decisions will always please you and bring peace and happiness to our community. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Whereas Chapter 231 of Public Laws of the State of New Jersey requires that at the commencement of each meeting a statement by the Consulting <coughs> Officer, now therefore be advised that the meeting requirements of this meeting have been met by posting an annual notice in the record in Hackensack in the Herald News of Woodland Park, and by posting such notice in the office of the borough clerk, as well as in the public place within the municipal building, and by notifying interested citizens. Said notice was posted on January 1, 2010. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a cell phone, please turn it on. Uh... Mel can't hear you, man. Okay. Mayor, why don't we let Mel sit up front here? It's, it's been on, Mel. Mayor, why don't we let Mel sit over here? Yeah. <laughs> if you have a cell phone, just uh, turn it off. Don't leave it on vibrate, please. Uh, this council meeting will be on uh, channel 30, uh, 77, Monday at 12 noon, Wednesday at 3 p.m., and Thursday at 4 p.m. If you have the net, you can get on the web at www.elmwoodparknj.us. www.elmwoodparknj.us. Thank you. Mayor, this evening under the approval of minutes, we have the regular meeting of May 6, 2010, the executive session of May 6, 2010, and the executive session of May the 13th, 2010. Motion, please. So moved. Moved by Mr. Trewinski, second by Mr. Castiglia. Discussion? Call roll, please. On roll call, Councilmember Catamania is absent. Councilmembers Castiglia? Yes. Trewinski? Yes. Boncino? Uh, yes, with the exception of May 13th, that was absent. Mm -hmm. Work? Yes. Convoy? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, under ordinances this evening on first reading, we have resolution 135-10, introduce ordinance 10-11 on first reading. Be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to amend the code of the borough of Elmwood Park, chapter one, therefore entitled general provisions, be passed and adopted on first reading, and be it resolved that a final hearing on said ordinance will be heard in the municipal building on Thursday, June 3rd, 2010, at 8 p.m., or as soon thereafter as the same can be heard, at which time and place all persons interested in said ordinance can be heard. Be it further resolved that the borough clerk be, and he is hereby authorized to advertise in a legal newspaper a notice of introduction and final hearing as required by law. Motion, please. So moved. <coughs> Mr. Convoy, second. Second. Mr. Work, discussion. Oh, Mayor, Mayor this, is, this is for the uh, violations for the parking? Yes. I only see the minimum penalty. I don't see the rest of it. Maximum penalty, $100 to between $100 and $250. And that's it. But where's the rest of it with the parking tickets and everything? It was that's increased with the parking tickets. Something's missing here. That's not this ordinance. Is there a separate one, Brian? A uh, Keith, rather? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Councilman Schwinski, I believe that this only addresses one part of what we talked about during the work session. Um, I have not been in receipt of the second ordinance um, that would raise the um, parking fees from anywhere from $26 uh, to $29 up to $50. I, I have not received that order. If my memory serves me correct, at the last work meeting, we okay to raise those fines. Yeah, I guess that's coming. No, but I, we, we should have been done in this ordinance, Mayor. Good. I don't see it. I think we should table this and put it all together. That's fine. That's fine. However, it delays the whole thing another two weeks. So you want to, then we'll make a separate ordinance for the parking tickets. I thought it was all together in a package. Motion to table? No, leave it alone.
Call roll, please. Uh, On roll call and introduction, Council Members Catamania is absent. Council Members Castiglia? Yes. Sherwinski? Yes. Poncino? Yes. Work? Yes. Convoy? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, tonight under the consent agenda resolutions, we have resolution 136-10, payment of bills, resolution 137-10, confirmation of checks, resolution 138-10, confirmation of payroll, resolution 139-10, approved check registers, resolution 140-10, redeem third-party tax lien for PAN investors, resolution 141-10, redeem third-party tax lien for JN properties, Resolution 142-10, redeem third-party tax lien for Clemente Enterprises, LLC. Resolution 143-10, refund JBL escrow account. Resolution 145-10, stipulation of settlement, Valley National Bank. And Resolution 146-10, stipulation of settlement for Exxon Mobil Corp. May I'm respectfully requesting that Resolution 144-10, which is the adoption of the Personnel Policies and Procedures Handbook, um, be t taken off the consent agenda, um, as we do have some items that we need to go over at next week's work meeting. And I request that we have a work action meeting next week in order to adopt that before the deadline that the GIF has set forth, which is May the 31st, 2010. <coughs> I have a motion to adopt, uh, to remove 144-10, please. So moved. Moved by Mr. Convoy and Mr. Uh, uh, Boncino. Uh, any discussion? Call the roll. On roll call to remove 144-10, Council Members Catamania is present. Uh, I just got here. Uh, really, I want to go over this here. Okay. Yes. Councilman, on this, we're removing we're removing one resolution from the consent agenda it's at my consent request. Agenda, Frank, consent agenda? We're going to consent all these payments. All right. that's, that's, that's Which one is it? One twenty. One forty-four ten. Just the last one. We're taking. One forty-four ten. All right. There they are. All right. Yes. All right. Council members, Castiglia. Yes. Chawinski. Yes. Boncino. Yes. Work. Yes. Convoy. Yes. Mayor, we'll need a motion on the consent agenda, agenda from motion 136 please. to 140. So moved. Mr. Convoy, second Mr. Castiglia. Discussion? Call the roll. On roll call on the consent agenda, council members Catamania? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Chawinski? Yes. Oncino? Yes. Work? Yes. Convoy? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, tonight under resolutions, we have resolution 147-10. Be resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Mowat Park that the following named and is hereby appointed as a summer camp counselor in the recreation program for the year 2010. Dana Pardoto of Elmwood Park, New Jersey, counselor first year at a salary of $1,600. Be it further resolved that the following names be and are hereby removed as summer counselors in the recreation program for the year 2010. Danielle Nicholas, Salvatore Vasco, and Nicholas de Blasio. Motion, please. So moved. Mr. Convoy. Second. Second, Mr. Work. Discussion? Call the roll. On roll call, Council Members Carmania? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Chawinski? Yes. Monsino? Yes. Work? Yes. Convoy? Motion carries. Resolution 148-10. Whereas the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Mallard Park recently enacted Ordinance 10-09, which permits the assignment of administrative duties to the Borough Clerk. And whereas the Mayor has assigned the administrative duties to the Borough Clerk as required by the Ordinance. And whereas it is necessary for the Council to consent to the Mayor's assignment of such duties. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Elmwood Park that the Borough Clerk is hereby assigned the duties enumerated in Ordinance 10-09, effective on May 24, 2010. Be it further resolved, shall receive yearly compensation in the amount of $12,000 for these duties, and the Chief Financial Officer is hereby directed to amend the salary ordinance accordingly prior to the ordinance yearly introduction. Motion, please. So moved. Mr. Second. Convoy. Second, Mr. Catamania. Uh, Discussion? Uh, gentlemen, uh, I know that we passed an ordinance codifying the additional administrative responsibilities of the clerk. Uh, these duties, except for one, have been carried out by the clerk for approximately 34 years. To pass a resolution adding $12,000 for these responsibilities or approximately 15% increase is high at any time. And not knowing what our cap situation is for next year, it's a cause for extra concern. 
we shall uh, <coughs> we should discuss this again, maybe delay it or extend it to three or four years for 5%, 5%, and 5%. If not, it may make it more difficult for us to negotiate with our unions, other department heads, and possibly lay off for next year. My comments do not negatively reflect on anything that the, uh, or the caliber of work that our clerk has been doing for the last many years that he's been with us. Call roll, please. Hold it. Mayor, can I just say something? Yes. No. Nope. I think $12,000 for an administrator is relatively cheap, speaking in most towns that do have an administrator. On the other note, we did beat this to death. We had a lot of discussion on this, if I may say so. And as far as going back 30 years, or we had a clerk do the administrative duties, I don't feel it worked the proper way and it needed some tweaking. And this is why we need to give a little more administrative power to somebody in that position. And this is the main reason we're doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I'd like to say something, man. Yes. Yeah, I think it's about time that we have an administrator in town. I've been asked for this for the longest time. Uh, we uh, here all the way said we have a ship without uh, without a captain. Finally, we have somebody who can watch overseas what's going on here. Because uh, this whole thing has been, for many years, many disorganized, very disorganized. Because uh, no one knows where somebody is. At least now we have somebody people can report to. And also, even with Mr. Trominski, uh, $12,000, I said, very little amount of money. Because uh, it's been already, we have seen that Mr. Cosmark has saved us a lot of money since he's been here. So I think he deserves $12,000 more. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Call the roll, please. On roll call, council members. Catamania? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Chawinski? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Work? Yes. Conboy? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 149-10 be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Elmwood Park that the following name be and is hereby appointed as tax assessor in the Borough of Elmwood Park at the annual salary of $30,000 to be worked eight hours per week with no medical benefits. Mr. Kevin Esposito of West Caldwell, New Jersey. Motion, please. So moved. Mr. Boncino, second Mr. Castiglia. Discussion? Call the roll, please. On roll call, council members Catamania? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Chawinski? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Work? Yes. Convoy? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, under reports tonight, we have the police department, the building department, the municipal court report, and the inspection report. Motion to approve all, please. And it's receiving file. Mr. Convoy, second? Second. Mr. Work? Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? So ordered. And Mayor, uh, we do not have any applications this evening. Okay. Uh, committee reports. Mr. Work, are you ready? Yeah. Uh, once again, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Elmwood Park Board of Health Department continues to offer the three free clinics to the residents of Elmwood Park. Uh, the Board of Health uh, still continues to uh, you know, plan the whole future H1N1 clinics in response to the increase in federal funding. Uh, the next H1N1 free clinic is uh, being held on June 7, 2010, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m held in a courtroom in the municipal building. Uh, the other, the second uh, free clinic is the adult consultation clinic, which uh, includes a finally health consultation with a registered nurse from Hackensack Hospital, free blood pressure screening, and uh, both uh, the first two free clinics are walk-in residents are welcome, no appointment is required. Uh, the adult consultation, next one is held, uh, it usually, they're usually held every third Tuesday of the month. The next day for, uh, for the free clinic is June 15th, uh, from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And the third free clinic is the Free Child Health Care Clinic, which includes uh, free immunizations for infants up to 18 years. Uh, should be a resident of Elmwood Park. Pediatrician and registered nurse will be on site. And this is for well children uh, without health insurance coverage and those not enrolled in the NJ Family uh, Care uh, Program. And this clinic is by pro uh, appointment only. Residents need to uh, call uh, Phone number 201-996-2038 uh, to set up that appointment. And the next two dates uh, for that clinic is on June 3rd, 2010, from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. And on June 7th, 2010, from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, in the municipal building. Uh, also, the Elm Park uh, Department of Health has also enrolled and as a provider in the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act program, which will provide six vaccines for any citizen of New Jersey, regardless of insurance or non-insurance. 
and these uh, vaccines include uh, Gordasal, uh, Pneumovax 23, Adicel, Boostrex, Prevnar 13, and Zostavax. And I may be pronouncing them all. And just to give you a brief what they are, what they, uh, are for, styles of prevention for human papillomal virus in young women that can be a uh, precursor to cervical cancer. Adicel is a first tetanus, diphtheria, and peristalsis booster, a vaccine available for both adolescents and adults 11 to 64 years old. Boostrex vaccine is used to help prevent diphtheria, tetanus, and prejudice in people who are ages 10 to 64. Pneumovax 23 is a vaccine for prevention of pneumonia, which is the leading cause of death worldwide. Zostavax is a vaccine to prevent singles and adults 60 years of age and older. And Prevnar 13 is a vaccine to prevent uh, service in face of pneumonia in infants and toddlers. And these uh, vaccines, will, we, will, uh, we will be getting them soon and we will alert you know, at the next council meeting when they are available. We will plan, we do plan to, uh, the Board of Health plans to offer these in the same of uh, free clinics, uh, such as the, uh, the H1N1 clinics, the adult consultation clinics, and also the free uh, child care clinics. And these will be offered to the residents of Elmwood Park at no charge, and any residents outside of Elmwood Park would be charged $15. Uh, just to let you know, these vaccines, uh, the cost of these vaccines range over $125. So we're, providing, we're trying to provide a savings for the uh, borough of Elmwood Park. And also I'd like to hope everybody has a happy Memorial Day weekend since when I've seen you before that. So uh, hopefully we'll see you at the parade. And I'd like to welcome uh, Kevin Esposito as a new tax assessor. Welcome aboard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Work. Mr. Convoy. Thank you, Mayor. I'd also like to <laughs> also welcome uh, Mr. Esposito to our team here. Um, I was, I'm a member of the personnel committee along with Councilman Catavania and Councilman Work, who's the chair of it. Uh, we met with uh, all the candidates and with our borough attorney. This is a very important position in our municipality. Uh, a lot of important things are coming up soon. We needed somebody with a lot of expertise. Uh, I won't go through his resume, but he's more than absolutely qualified. And uh, uh, even when he came to the meeting, he was well prepared. He reviewed Albert Park before we got here. Brought very, I already, uh, Kevin, you're, I've already been selling you to our CFO. I told him all about your great spreadsheets. And you both have something in common. You guys don't like headers on the second page. So you guys should really hit it off well. I'm giving a 101 Excel class after this, so you can see. No, just these points. But uh, was very, very prepared. A lot of history on the Park. So we thought that was a bonus. So welcome aboard. Uh, uh, on a financial front, uh, we continue to tackle that on all sides. Uh, since many of our department heads here, many of the key elements of our municipal government are here. Those that aren't here are also key members, but uh, since the, many of you are here, uh, including our clerk, I just want to thank you for your continued cooperation in this process. It's not easy, uh, as the mayor touched on a little bit earlier, uh, but we have uh, made some big strides and everybody uh, stepped up. Uh, with regarding to our clerk, just to make a, one quick comment, um, this process started almost seven months ago. We've discussed it. Uh, we wanted to formalize what we did. And uh, in his tenure here, um, with all the things and challenges that we've had to deal with, uh, as mentioned earlier, there's been some savings. He's almost saved the municipality close to half a million dollars in his time here. So, uh, you know, Keith, welcome out on your uh, good luck with your new assignments and so forth. And thank you for all that. So uh, that is all part of the financial part. Regarding uh, recreation, a lot of important things are going on there. Uh, Councilman Work already alluded to the Memorial Day Parade. Please come out for that. Uh, right after that, uh, the first week of June, you may have already seen these flyers. We have Community Day coming up on June 5th. It's uh, another great day planned. Um, we're working very hard so everybody enjoys themselves. Please come out for Community Day, folks. Uh, everybody had a really great time last year. We brought back a lot of the same events, rides, and so forth. And uh, so please come out for that. Immediately following that is the big grud grudge match. It's going to be the second annual uh, policeman versus fireman softball. We've got members of the fire department here and the police. I think the police uh, have the record 1-0. So uh, let's root out our fire department. Uh, to make the game interesting, we are moving the field to the major league field and increasing the size of the softball. So that should cut down on the 40-some-odd run scored at the last game. So uh, look out, cops. Here come the fire guys to the rescue. So come out for that, folks. It's going to be immediately after that. 
A uh, couple other things on recreation, folks, please, 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 take advantage of one of the cheapest summer camps available in the area. We have studied, I don't know how many towns, Elwood Park still has one of the cheapest summer camps, and it is a fantastic summer camp. Other towns actually are jealous of our camps, and they've told us that. We got a lot of outside residents who want to join. Please get on board for summer camp. Don't get missed out on that. Uh, also, um, I don't have the flyer, but soccer registration is going on. We've already made some great changes for this upcoming, upcoming soccer season, uh, and I think the kids are going to have a real blast uh, with some of the changes we've made, so don't forget soccer camp. And of course, residents, for those of you who sign up for our sports, don't forget, we now have online registration. I mentioned this at the last public meeting. This is all going over like gangbusters. People are loving it. Everyone's utilizing it almost. And those who don't have access to computers, as I said, we have at the Recreation Center two great working stations for you to come on in and input your data. This has been a home run, folks. Take advantage of it. A little, I have a couple little community notes. Uh, folks, we could really use your help. Um, I already know that our police department's gonna do everything they possibly can. We really need your help. We have been using monies that we have, not from trying to increase tax dollars. These are monies we're taking from the Rec Trust to go for open space money, that's where we go and get half. We put up half, they give us half. We've been on a campaign here to try to upgrade all of our parks. A lot of the, you know, with the times being what they are, not everyone can afford to go down the shore anymore or they're cutting back on their vacations. And for many of the residents in our town, our parks are their vacation or their backyards. And um, we've had some vandalism of items that we've purchased. These are new items. Uh, all the parks have sidewalks around them now. We've put up these really nice picnic tables. We're painting the sun shelters, some parks. Two more parks will get rehabbed over this summer, um, like Birchwood with more rock walls and stuff like that. But we are having some vandalism, and uh, I know the chief and his staff will do what they can. But you know, folks, some of this vandalism, not to harp on it, uh, I hope it's not our folks in our community, but <clears throat> some of the items are, <laughs> I'm stunned because it's not just like, Match marker. <laughs> Some of the picnic tables are being disassembled. You need tools to do that, and the parts are being taken away. I, I, hate, I hate to bring that out here on TV, or but I think it's important for the residents that will catch us on the internet or on TV, and those that are here, those that live around those parks, please. I understand it's sensitive. You don't have to give your name when you call the police department. You know, your identity will never be you know let out. <laughs> Please, if you see someone in the parks, at dark, there's, they're not supposed to have anybody in them. If you see stuff happening, you know, please, give a, give a shout out to the, to the police desk. You know, not that we want to punish everybody, you know, we hard our kids. I know they don't have a lot of places to go or whatever the situation may be, but it's not fair to be, you know, disassembling stuff and actually carting it away. <laughs> so please, give us a hand on that. On two positive notes, uh, actually it's uh, uh, on two individuals, uh, I just want to comment on uh, some of our athletes, our high school athletes. Uh, recently, I hope you caught the uh, community news. Um, a couple of weeks ago, one of our high school seniors, Vinny Fava, signed his letter to, uh, that he's going to get his full year, uh, four year scholarship to write a college for wrestling. Another today in the record, and one of our local boys, one of our other local boys today in the, Ber in the Bergen record is Gary Nova, a longtime athlete uh, growing up in this community. He's in high school now, a junior at Don Bosco. Played throughout the Bombers, had a couple of Super Bowl seasons. He just signed today to letter of intent to go to Pittsburgh, University of Pittsburgh, to uh, play for the Panthers under uh, former head coach uh, Dave Wonstadt. So I just want to congratulate those two young men. Of course, we have a lot of great seniors graduating this year, getting academic scholarships and so forth. Uh, so I want to congratulate them as well as well. But it's always great to see some of the kids from our hometown excel in these areas that they're very difficult. So congratulations to all of them. Everybody have a great Memorial Day weekend. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Convoy. May I make one correction? I think our summer program is one of the most inexpensive programs. No, you said cheap, and my wife says, never say cheap. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Every time I say it, something's cheap, no, it's inexpensive, so uh, uh, maybe we should use the word most inexpensive so that the people don't think we have a cheap program going. No, we certainly don't. It's well worth the bad end, so. That's right. Mr. Bonsino. Yes, Mayor. Um, last, uh, last public meeting, I talked about the uh, New Jersey SEM uh, provided a status on the uh, electric uh, supply services. Uh, it was supposed to go out uh, for auction the end of May. That's been uh, put out to uh, the week of uh, 
uh, between June 1st and June 4th, and uh, the SEM has set a strike price of 6% uh, below the uh, basic uh, generation service. So uh, we opted into that uh, for our electric and street lighting electricity. Uh, so I should have an update beginning of June on, on the results of that auction. Um, and uh, I mentioned last time also that the, our police department uh, has been working on a junior police academy and uh, Chief Ingrassolino and his team have put together quite a comprehensive itinerary for the uh, academy and it's going to include, uh, uh, it's going to be structured as an academy for 7th and 8th graders and uh, there'll be a press release shortly to give information on the details of registration um, but the, uh, the, the police in concert with our Board of Education secured the high school to be the, the base of this academy. It's going to take place July 12th through July 16th and it's going to include items like physical training, uh, motor vehicle stops, firearm demo, a canine demo, and a recruit competition and it should be a very exciting week and uh, look good. forward to participating. Sounds good. And a uh, final note, I'd like to welcome Mr. Esposito uh, to our team. That's what I have. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Catamania? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, after Mr. Cowboy, Report everything. I have anything, nothing else to say. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> I have been more key lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to congratulate you. <laughs> Mr. Esposito, welcome aboard. Congratulations. I wish you the best. And also, Mr. Keith Caswar, congratulations. And I uh, wish you the, the best of all to you. Thank you. And then he also said, uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chuinski? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. I also would like to welcome Kevin aboard. I'd like to say also congratulations to Keith on your appointment to uh, administrator. I'm looking forward to good things from you. And also to Ed Feldman, I see you, you've just retired, right, Ed? Or is in the process of retiring. Good luck on your retirement. Uh, I had the privilege last night, I attended the uh, planning board meeting, and some good came out of that as far as I'm, I'm sure they'll elaborate, the mayor and Larry, who are at the planning board. I'm not going to get into that, what the outcome was, but. One of the, uh, a better note on that, uh, a final note on that was the parking problems that we have with our two families. And if, as many of you well know that we do have an ordinance, I think since 1978 or 1980 requiring two spaces per unit. I think Lou May they introduced that ordinance back Absolutely. then. Absolutely. Uh, but the problem being that we don't enforce the ordinance because the garages are, uh, the tenant does not get the two spaces. So I'm going to start crafting an ordinance with this ordinance committee to enforce that. Any houses built after that ordinance was enforced to look into what we can do to make sure a tenant gets a parking space in the garage and the driveway as it was supposed to meant to be. And if you remember on that ordinance also, the house size was increased on the footprint by 5% to allow for this garage, extra garage, which in turn built bigger houses on top. So that needs to be addressed, but that did come out of that meeting last night. Uh, on another note, I attended the GIF meeting, which I'm the uh, one of the uh, claims committee uh, people, it came up that there's a lot of lawsuits been pending and more and more are coming over sidewalks. Although we we are led to believe that the owner is responsible for the sidewalk in front of his house, the town has been named in these suits continuously and a lot of other towns. There are several towns right now addressing uh, their own ordinances to have sidewalks repaired. They're sending their maintenance people out and putting the burden on the homeowner. And that's another one so I'm going to start crafting, I think, because we do have some sidewalks in town that are pretty bad. These people should be made aware of it and take care of them. Okay, man. On the fire department note, uh, there was a memorial service at the Bergen County Police and Fire Academy on the 16th for fallen comrades. There also was a swift water awareness class for them coming up. Uh, maybe we can get the chief to donate the boat and let them take it out for a spin. And uh, one more note on that chief. The, um, I heard through the grapevine that the uh, fire department's a little upset with the ball game and they might have some ringers coming in. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Mr. Gestiglia? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor. As uh, Councilman Trewinski mentioned, uh, I have a little update here on the process of the planning board. Uh, we had a meeting last night to discuss some of the effects of additional two-family dwellings in town, if that were to happen, and what... And some proposals on what we can do to avoid the overdevelopment of uh, additional two families coming in. Uh, it was pretty crowded last night. I guess there was maybe 60 or 70 residents here. 
Yeah, 50s. Okay. At least. Yeah, I think so. Uh, they had a lot of input. They came up with a lot of good suggestions. Uh, we also got the chance to answer some of their questions. So I think it was very informative. It was back and forth. It was a good meeting. It was probably something that should have happened a long time ago, but the meeting, the meeting was good. I was very, very satisfied with it. I'll have some updates on that also later on as, as the process goes on. Uh, on the planning board, I mentioned last time that a bakery was coming in over on Market Street next to Angelo's Pizza. It was approved at the meeting, so it will be coming in. And like I said before, if his, uh, if his pastry is going to be as good as his pizza, I'm going to be in, I'm going to be in trouble. It's going to be a better order. I'll meet you there, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, no, no, Tom. Yeah, the process went through. <laughs> the process went through pretty smoothly. I said no. Don't be over this. <laughs> I won't be over there. There was a bakery in that building at one time before, so he came in and, and basically had to ask me some questions on uh, hours of operation, how many employees he will have, and for what days he will be open. <coughs> Uh, about the new operation that's coming in, the new bakery. Uh, most of that information, all of that information gets on the record and we, we do have a word to always go back to it and make sure that he's adhering to what he, what he said he was going to do there. Uh, the old Elmwood Ford property is going to be remodeled to uh, accommodate for five new retail spaces. Now the size of the building will be reduced a little bit. They're going to do quite a bit of work over there. It's going to be a big, big improvement to the area. Uh, we had some residents from the condos come in. They had some concerns. They were at the planning board meeting. The applicant is uh, very community-minded. He ironed out most of their problems. Any, any concerns that they had were all ironed out before that meeting was over. And uh, that went well also. So I have a picture here that they, they gave us. Of course, it's an artist, artist rendering. I don't know if you can get that. This one? You see it? Good, right? It's a beautiful building. It's really going to look nice today. I mean, Elwood Ford was there for years, but this is really going to upgrade that area quite a bit. Is that the mayor waving? Yes, yeah, that's, 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 that's I'm shopping already. <laughs> they photoshopped them, you know. Uh, and also, I got two reminders. I was, I was talking about the two families a little earlier. If anybody in town suspects or, or knows for sure that there's an illegal two family or a three family in their neighborhood or somewhere else in town, that should be reported. Uh, call the building department. I, I don't know if they're going to ask for your name, but it's not going to get publicized or anything. The people won't know who, who called in on the complaint. But you should call the building department on that. It's a, it's a big problem we have in town, and we're working as much as we can to try to straighten that out. So any help that we can get from the public, the building department phone number is 201-796-4085. Just tell me you call it about just suspect or three families. And one other reminder, Mayor. Uh, hazardous waste. Of course, everybody knows that that shouldn't be put in your regular trash or even in the recycling. When they, when they talk about hazardous waste, you talk about things like gasoline or oil products, paint, anything with mercury in it, like your old thermostats that you're throwing out from the house, uh, bubble weed killers, propane tanks. It can all be brought over to Bergen Community College on their hazardous waste days. Now, the next one is Sunday, June 13th between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. So that's uh, Bergen Community College, 400 Paramus Road in Paramus. That's it, man. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. Any report? No, thank you, Mayor. <coughs> thank you. In relation to what uh, Councilman Castiglia has mentioned, uh, if you see anybody building on the weekends, uh, call my office. I don't have any uh, thing to contact you. We can take your number, just. but I wish you would leave your number so we can get back to you and uh, tell you if we found any, any problems there. Uh, we have someone working from the building department on Saturdays. Uh, I have one item down here. Uh, his pay for the uh, few hours that he worked, three hours, is $114. And he brought in profit to the town, $876, catching people illegally working. So it certainly pays uh, for you to let us know. They're not only cheating on uh, getting permits and maybe doing something that's dangerous, uh, but they're also cheating on us uh, by not getting a permit and uh, not paying taxes on that. So, so help out on, on a situation uh, such as that. Uh, Mr. Castiglia also mentioned about uh, uh, Elmwood Ford and the unit. Uh, as you can see, <coughs> just as a reminder, this, this basically looks like Pathmark. It's the same, the same decor that Pathmark has. And uh, this uh, 
This view is the corner of it, so the peak over here will be on the side of the building. This is the front of the building on Route 4. Uh, I'm told it will take about a year to, uh, to construct that. Uh, we did have residents come. I think it was all worked out amicably. Everybody was happy with it. I did get the uh, memo to the chief to see about uh, uh, the highway, and I have to, I'm waiting for a reply whether we want to do anything with that or not with, uh, with a traffic light there. That would give us three traffic lights in the space of uh, uh, one shopping center. So he's indicating he doesn't think so. So uh, uh, that would be another rateable. Worked out beautifully. I have to congratulate the, uh, the planning board for working closely with the residents and the, and the developer. Uh, I did meet Mr. Chawinski, walked in on a meeting with, with the Park and Ride people, the State Department of Transportation. Uh, we're moving right along. We were about an inch away from doing it, and we're still an inch away from doing it. Or should I say we've moved an inch? We moved an inch. Moved an inch. We're still not getting anywhere with that. They, they're, they're still looking for plans. They're still looking for something to do. It's been three years, approximately three years, to get a park and ride down here. We're on it. And uh, this council is willing to say, yes, uh, we'll accommodate people for the park ride. We will make a, a, a fiduciary uh, in, increase on that by uh, charging for parking there. Uh, I don't know how long these things take. I, 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 it's beyond me. I know uh, it's been mentioned to uh, Governor Christie, and I'm sure he has his hands full. And you go there, they say they have the money, but uh, I just does, hope it doesn't take as long as it uh, it might take us to put the sound barriers up. That was 12 years. Still waiting. Not up yet? No, no, they're very small. <laughs> very small. <laughs> they're very small. So uh, the meeting uh, last night on the uh, master plan revision, uh, all those that were here, except the two, uh, were in favor of uh, us doing that to uh, decrease the number of two-family houses. Uh, it was, I think, only two people here were in favor of it. I would change that. It was about one and a half. I'm not sure whether one wanted it or didn't want it. And everybody else, over 30 people, uh, spoke in, in favor of eliminating it. So uh, the, the council has to wait for the planning board to vote on that, and then this council will make a decision whether they want to go along. And I think it's a, it's a good program. It will save us a uh, number of kids going to school. Uh, um, Minimally 120 school children increase on the police department, the ambulance corps, traffic, uh, road parking, and everything else. So uh, people were very astute in their comments, and uh, we appreciated that. Um, other than that, uh, I don't have anything else. Uh, I'll open it to the public. If there's anyone in the public who wishes to be heard, please raise your hand and uh, come to the microphone and speak. Does no one wish to be heard? Yes, young lady. Hey, can I just say something for one second before sure. you? On that note with the uh, elimination of two families, just clarify that a little. You're going to go to 75 by 100 lots or something because everybody's going to think there's going to be no two oh, families. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, the, thank the you. Existing two families will remain as they are. So don't get, we don't want a million phone calls tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> let, me, let me clarify that, thank you. Everyone received a letter with the designation as to what's being changed. Make sure you're doing that. If you're in an area that's two family and it's not highlighted, all the two families that will stay there, one families will be able to change. If you're in an area that's highlighted and the building comes down, you, I mean, that comes down, but if you want, it's a one family, you can't change it to two. However, if you have a two family and something happens to the building, a fire, you can replace that. So we're not changing any of that. Yes, ma'am. Hi, uh, my name is Scott Kalinowski. Just, just pull that down a little bit. I'm gonna Thank you. 204 Roosevelt Avenue. Um, I came to address the council tonight in reference to littering. Um, I walk a lot in town. The areas underneath the two trestles, Parkway and uh, Route 80. I've recently called uh, the DPW on several occasions. Uh, they cleaned it up once. Second time I called, um, I made my request to have it cleaned up and week and a half or so went by, I called back again. She said she had spoken to the superintendent. He was looking into it. She called me back. She said that that is not the DPW's jurisdiction, that it is the state's property. Now I have a problem with it in the respect that it's an area as wide as here. 
There's liquor bottles, garbage. It's terrible. Under Route 80? Under Route 80 and under the parkway. The overpasses? River Drive? I'm sorry, no, on, on the boulevard. Um, they just cleaned, he cleaned it up again. He said that he would clean it up again, but it's not their jurisdiction that it's the state. And I asked if there was any contact names or emails or anything that I could get in touch with somebody, and they said no. But like as a taxpayer, I don't understand what, I asked, can't they put a standing work order in once a month to clean this area up? What can it take, like 15 minutes? No, it, it's, it, it's quite a project on the Route 80 over here. It takes a while. In the past, we've had the fire department come with their hose and clean it out. And the DPW has cleaned it out every so often, but we are aware of it, and we do have a cleanup day to try to do it. I walked under there the other day. I was, uh, not to contradict you, but I was pleased because they put all those pigeon things up so that the birds weren't there, and some of the items that were coming with pebbles and things, not what you're talking about, that come from the, uh, the structure itself, but uh, mm -hmm. there weren't any bird droppings, which, uh, which I was pleased with. Well, uh, we get to, it's, it's, it's the building, of, it's not our responsibility, but we have to do it. They'll never come and clean it. Well, that's my point, you, you know, and especially under um, the parkway. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a gentleman who kind of hangs out underneath that trestle and he drinks and there's liquor bottles and garbage and yeah. it's terrible. We'll have somebody check that out every so often. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, you, you missed one more if you go under Route 80, going west off, off uh, uh, the, um, River Drive. Uh, no matter what we do, once they get under there, they throw something out. Oh, sure. We, and, and we were in there constantly cleaning it up. It doesn't look like we ever go clean it up, but uh, they do it. Well, now that you mention it, I'll give I'm you sorry, another I area. It. <laughs> <laughs> um, 46, when you're coming around the turn, yes. going towards 21, that whole same thing. They must be throwing stuff out the window. It's horrendous. Yeah. It looks terrible. <clears throat> and I believe that that's our town, yes? Yep. Where it's not lifting. It's. Um, when you're getting on 46 and you're going around the bend to like get on 21? Yes. It's terrible. On the other side of the river you're talking about? Or here? Yeah. Getting, on, getting, on 40, getting on 46? I guess it's, it's on our side, I guess. It's, uh, it's before Crooks Ave. You know, when you're on 46 and you go around the bend to get on 21? That's, 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 that's the other side? The so that's not us. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else who wish to be heard? If not, I'll close the public portion of the meeting. Mayor, we have a, uh, an executive session that we need to enter into, if I may read the resolution. Yes. Whereas the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances. And whereas this public body is of the opinion that search, such circumstances presently exist, and whereas the governing body wishes to discuss personnel in the tax assessor's office, personnel in the billing department, and personnel amongst the department heads, minutes will be kept, and once the matter involving the confidentiality of the above no longer requires that confidentiality, then the minutes can be made public. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the public be excluded from this meeting. Mayor, we'll need a a motion to go into executive. Moved by Mr. Second. Convoy, second by Mr. Vodzino. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? And before I ask for a motion to close the meeting, I, I would also like to uh, welcome uh, Mr. Kevin Esposito to our, uh, our borough. And uh, Mr. Esposito, I just want to notify you in advance, if we lose any tax appeals, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> and we have some major ones out there. I'm sure you are aware of it. <laughs> So uh, you've, you've got your work cut out, and, and some of these things are really not anyone's fault. The economy is hurting us, and uh, we try to do the best we can. May I have a motion to adjourn, please? Mr. Convoy, second by Mr. Castiglio. All in favor, opposed, so ordered.